nice problem. It kind of sums everything up in one problem, where you have to factor and then also solve uh, an equation with factor as part of solving. Okay. So the very first thing, we always want to make sure that we have, as far as the equation goes, kind of a vague question. So what we want to make sure that we have in the equation. Deciphered my question. Uh, yeah, we want to make sure that one side is zero. If one side is not zero, absolutely everything we do is a waste of time. Okay, we're going to make one side zero. Let's write that down. Make one side. Well, that's that is the case. It is zero, so that's good. If it wasn't, then we would want to uh, rearrange things a bit. Um, Okay, so next we want to factor. All right, so factor. The first thing we want to do when we factor is to look at all of the terms, every single one of them, all three of them in this case, and see do they all have something in common? Like do they have a two in common or a three in common that we can factor out of all of them? What, what's the case here? Is there anything? Nothing. Nothing to factor out. Okay. Uh, Answer here is no. We don't have a common factor. Uh, so next, we um, yeah, factor it. I don't know how else to describe it. We're gonna take this quadratic. We're gonna break it into those two parentheses so that if we multiply the two parentheses together, we get the original. Right. So just a, a quick reminder here. If we were to multiply these two together, we can use what we know about what's supposed to result. So let's factor that out. So for one thing, we're supposed to multiply this w term by this w term and get 3w squared. Can we do that by just putting w and w there? What would we get if we multiply these together? So all right, we'll just get w Excuse me, w squared. We'll just get w squared. So how do we get 3w squared? Put three with one of them. Put it here, you put it there, it doesn't matter. But I left a little space to put a three there. So, so far, so good. We got three W times W. We're just running through that distribution process. We do three W times W, we get three W squared. Okay? Then we'll jump over to the, the end of it, to that number seven. That number seven tells us. Said it tells us something about the factors as well. It's 3w times w gives us 3w squared, okay? And also, when we multiply the number by the other number, we multiply those two together, what should we come out with? Seven. We should multiply this number by that number, come out with seven. Not a lot of choices there, right? How many how can you multiply two numbers to get seven? One times seven, that's all there is. So maybe it's a positive one and a positive seven, like that. So we'll check and see. Multiply it out and see if it works out. That's all there is that you can really do. That's your only recourse. So 3w times w is 3w squared. Of course it is. That's why we chose 3w and w. Uh, the one times the seven gives us that seven we're looking like, we're looking for. Also take the three W times uh, sorry not W we already did that the three W times uh, seven that gives us plus twenty one W and we do the one times W that gives us one W so is have we factored it correctly or no. Yes, how do we know? Exactly, that is exactly the reason why we know we did it correct. Because 21W plus W is 22W, just like it was supposed to be. It's supposed to come out to be 22W. The reason why that worked is because we happened to pick one and seven to go in the right place. If you put seven here and one there, that wouldn't have worked. Right? 
Put 7 there, you'll get 7w. And if 1 is here, you'll get 3w. You get 7w plus 3w, you get 10w. So that doesn't work. But we happen to pick it just right from the very beginning. And in the end, we get 3w squared, which is 22w plus 7. So it's factory. That's what we've done so far. Now that we have it factored, we've done this very clever, genius thing in factoring these, what do we do next? Cameron? What do we do next? Now that we have it factored, we get this times this equals zero. Why would that be for me to come up with zero? Yes, to come out with what b like what has to be zero? One side, so if it was w plus seven, we could do negative three. Negative seven. Yes, exactly. Okay. I'm gonna state it a little bit differently, but you're absolutely correct. What will what can w be to cause w plus seven to be zero? Or three w plus one to be zero. Right? So then here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set each factor. A factor is something that's multiplied by something else. That's what the definition of a factor is. So this is a factor and this is a factor because they're multiplied together. So set each factor equal to zero. Yeah. So once we do that, So uh, we'll do the one that Cameron picked. Set it equal to zero, then solve for w. It's a really easy equation to solve, right? The w would have to be equal to negative seven. So there's a solution. And then we set the other factor equal to zero. And we get three w equals negative one. W equals negative one third. So there's another solution. Here's a little question to see if we remember you know, everything. We put it all together. What does that mean? Like, we found w equals negative one third. What's the importance of w is negative one third? We're going to use less in this context right here. Yes? And what will happen when you do that? When you plug them for w, it will equal zero. We can plug in negative seven here into this original equation, or this one, because all we did was just rewrite it. These would be the exact same thing. If they weren't equivalent, then, then that wouldn't have been very helpful. But if you put negative seven in there, it'll come out zero. If you put a negative one third there, you come out with zero. Equal zero, which I think is really, really cool because. If before we came up with this factoring idea, if I gave you this equation and you were supposed to just from nowhere come up with negative one third is the number you're supposed to plug in for w, right? this is a fairly complicated looking expression. And you're supposed to figure out that negative one third is the number you plug in for w, and you square it, and you plug it for this w, you multiply it by 22, and somehow all that comes out to be zero. And it takes a fairly simple process. We just need to factor. That's brilliant because when that's equal to zero, when you multiply two things and it equals zero, then you know one of those things has to be zero. So you set both equal to zero and solve. Take a pretty complicated looking problem, break it down into a much simpler a couple of equations, and solve. Just solve those linear equations. Pretty neat. All right. Any other questions?
What's that number one thing that we do when we have an equation? We want to solve this equation? Make one side zero. So this side is not zero, and neither is this, but this certainly seems the easiest to make into a zero because it's simple. There's not much to over here, right? So how are we going to get that side to be zero? Subtract three on both sides. So that's three minus three is zero. Perfect. Subtract three. No like terms here, so we just get this full expression like that. So we did that. Made sure that both sides are zero. Let's really make this back in order. Okay, so if we go back to this one, we made sure that one side is zero. Now we're going to factor it. We're going to look for a common factor. Do they have a common factor? A two in common, three in common, anything? A T, anything? Nod or shaking of the heads, raising of the hand, a response of some kind? Do they have a T in common? Two. Okay, if they, have, if they have a T and a two in common, well, these two do. These two have a two and a T in common, but this one doesn't. Right? All three of them need to have. Two, does that have two? Let's see, let's factor out a two, which means that we're going to distribute the two back into these three terms that are going to be in here and come out with the original. So 4t minus t minus, what would we put right here? Oh, well, but two times what is three? And there is a number. Yeah? Uh, one and a half. Yeah, one and a half. We could certainly do one and a half. But then it, I don't know, that seems like a harder problem. So I'm going to say less than one and a half. But very good. It is one and a half. So I'll say, as far as like, are there any factors that go into all these evenly? No. Okay, so we check for that. So next we're going to factor. We're going to break it into these two parentheses. There's a little bit of work involved here. A little bit of work because okay, possibility number one. Uh, first of all, let's talk about this again. Can I just put a T and a T there? And is that going to work out? Why is that not going to work out? It's only T squared. What do we need it to be? 8t squared. How will we get this times this to come out to be 8t squared instead of just t squared? Do what? Put an 8 with one of them. Uh, let's squeeze an 8 right there. Is there another way to get 8? Danielle? You can do 2 and 4. You can do 2 and 4. That's why I wrote these other parentheses because you can do 2t two and 4t. 2t two times 4t is 8t squared. So there, that's why I've broken it up into these two possibilities. And we look down here at the end and we look at negative 3, then what that's telling us is that this number times that number needs to come out to be negative 3. Same thing here. This number times that number needs to come out to be negative 3. Let's look at all the possibilities. Okay, so to get this number times that number to be negative 3, what are the possibilities? Yeah? Negative 3 and 1? Negative 3 and 1. If we put negative 3 here, positive 1 there, yeah, that, neg that part of the distribution will work out. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. That's not the only possibility, right? We could do positive 3 and negative 1. That will make something different. We can do... 
um, negative one here and positive three here. That will also make another uh, you know, unique combination, unique product. We could also, last possibility, a positive one here and a negative three there. We're going to explore all those possibilities until we figure out which one is correct. And the same thing over here. We can put a negative three here and a positive one there, or a positive three here and a negative one there, or uh, a positive one there, negative three there, or negative one there. So far, the best we can do is to narrow down to those four possibilities. You know, those are the only four, those are the only ways we're going to get at squared and negative three. At squared in the beginning there and negative three for the, the constant term. Right, so how do we figure out which one's correct? Try. What's that? Try. Just try them, like multiply them together. This could be everything from here into everything here. Let's see if it works out. Look, let's try this one and then maybe. That doesn't work, so we'll just work our way up. But 8t times t is 8t squared. Or if you think you know which one is correct, you can just stop me and say, let's do that one. Uh, so 8t squared minus 24t, that's 8 times 3, plus t minus 3. Is that going to work? No, because we're trying to get what? 2, negative 2, right? Negative 2t. And that comes out to be negative 23t. So that's out, and crossing out. That doesn't work. Do you remember this? What's going to happen if we switch? Just switch the signs. Switch this to a positive, or switch this to a negative one, and this to a positive three. Remember what's going to happen, Danielle? It'll, It'll switch that middle term that what we just got was negative twenty-three. It'll switch it to positive twenty-three. Okay, so that one's out. So let's try this one. 8t times t is 8t squared minus 8t plus 3t minus 3. That doesn't work because it's a negative 5t. Okay, that one's out. If we switch the signs, we'll just get a positive 5t. So that one's out. All of those are not it. Start with this one. 2t times 4t is 8t squared. 2t times 3 is 6t. Negative 4t. Negative 3. That gives us 8t squared plus 2t minus 3. That's not exactly right, but it's very close, right? Instead of 2t, we want negative 2t. How do we get a negative 2t instead of a positive 2t? Switch those signs, switch these signs right here. So we'll switch them, that'll give us this one. Uh, that's not working. And obviously these are gonna work because there's our guy. Two t plus one, four t minus three. There it is, we've found the factorization that works. Whereas up to speed as Cameron was a minute ago, what is it that we do next? Find out what t is, okay. Just a little, like a half step before that. How do we figure that out? Take each factor. To make it zero, okay. Okay, so maybe a half step before that. How is it that we go about figuring out what t is supposed to be to make it each factor zero? Take the factor, 2t plus 1. What do I do with it? Take it equal to zero. Okay. To figure out what t needs to be so that this is zero, you just basically said set this equal to zero and solve for t. Figure out what t is supposed to be so that this is equal to zero. So 2t equals negative 1, t equals negative 1 half. 
same thing with the other factor. 4t equals 3, t equals 3 fourths. There we are, both of the solutions. And if you want to be real sure, let's be real sure. Let's just double check. How do I double check and make sure I found the right solutions? Plug them in for the two. Plug them in for the two. So let's, uh, you pick one. Which one looks the trickiest to plug in? Three fourths. Let's do three fourths. So 8 times 3 fourths squared, okay? Please remember, it's just the thing that you plug in for t to get squared. This 8 doesn't have anything to do with the square. Okay, because you're using parentheses around the whole thing. Just the t gets squared. Here we go, keep going. 2 times 3 fourths uh, minus 3 equals 0. Or we could go back to the original, and, and then all this stuff would have to come out to be equal to 3. It doesn't really matter which way we do it. We got eight times, when you square three fourths, that's three fourths times three fourths. We multiply straight across, we get nine sixteenths. Minus, now this two cancels this four, these are two, so we get three halves. Minus three. This eight cancels the sixteen, we get nine halves. Minus three halves. Minus three. And what's nine halves minus three halves? Have a common denominator, nine halves minus three halves. Six halves. Six halves minus three. And what's six halves? Oh, six halves. Three. Three minus three is zero, exactly how it's supposed to be. Take out your, before you take a, a review of, of 9.6, I'm going to have you try one on your own. I'm just going to come around and see how you're doing. And then we'll take a little and see. Yeah. Are we what? So let's get one side to be zero first. That's the first thing. If it's not equal to zero, even if you were able to factor one side, it would be useless. Because we're using this thing called the zero product property, which, at, at the very least, the zero product property needs a product of things to be equal to zero, not equal to five, not equal to 12, not equal to anything except zero. So you got to have a zero on one side. All right, then we look for anything that they have in common, which is nothing. They don't have any factors in common, like uh, do they, this got a 2 in it. Well, that doesn't have a 2 in it. A 4, no 5, nothing in common between all three uh, terms. And 
Do we factor it? And even if you hadn't quite factored it, most of the work that I was looking at, you had the idea, like you knew what you're supposed to be doing, and you had just yet to figure out the right combination. Okay? Let me just throw some possibilities out there. We can try 2x times 2x, right? Because that would be 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Uh, then we need to multiply to make negative 5. Not multiply to make negative 19. Multiply to make negative 5. Think about it. We're putting two numbers here. Okay? The reason why they multiply, like why we're asking ourselves, what do they multiply to make? Because we're going to multiply them together. When we multiply them together, are we going to get negative 19x? No, we're going to multiply two numbers together, and we're going to get a number. A number times a number is a number, not a number times a number is a, a number times x. Okay? So this number times that number is negative 5. So 1 and negative 5. That's a legitimate guess. Now we just see, does it work out? Do we get negative 19x? So we get 4x squared. We get negative 5. So those are the first and last terms. Then we get negative 10x plus 2x. No, nope, that's negative 8x. That's 4x squared minus 8x minus 5. That's not it. Uh, so we're going to change this. So I'm going to change it. Uh, I'm just going to go the same. I'm going to make this 4. And this a 1. Right? You don't have to write 1. If you just write x, then it's understood to be a 1. We still get 4. x times x is 4x squared. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. So this time we get 4 times negative 5. Or 4x times negative 5 is negative 20x. 1 times 1x is x. We put those together, we get negative 19x. So yeah, it worked out. We found it. That is the correct factorization. So next, so this, I really want you guys to get this. I don't want this. I don't really want any of this to be uh, magic steps that you follow and you come out with the right answer and you're not quite sure why. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is set each factor equal to zero. I'm going to talk about why that is. Okay. The reason why we can do that, I mean, that's kind of a, a big leap to say this times this is 0, so this itself is equal to 0, or this itself is equal to 0. But think about it, a times b, right? A number times a number, just like this, a times b. When a number multiplies by a number, another number and you get 0, that's why it's so important that you get 0, you're using the 0 power property. If you multiply these two numbers together and get 0, then one of them has to be 0. That's why we set each factor equal to zero. Either a is zero or b is zero. Otherwise, this is impossible. If one of these isn't zero, then you weren't able to multiply and make zero. Okay. So we set them each equal to zero. Okay. That's why we do it. That's why we can do it. 4x equals negative 1. 4, or sorry, x equals negative 1 4. So you divide both sides by 4. So add 5 to both sides, x is 5. You can plug it in and check, but we will not do that right now. Okay, any questions about that? Danielle? Can we do on that, like, that like the starting problem, they have something in common? Like, is it a different not terribly different. Um, yeah, we can do that. Hold on just a sec. Let me make one up. Um, Six x squared minus twenty six x equals twenty. I'm just going to do this one with you, not too quickly, but kind of quickly. All right. First thing is we need to have one side be equal to zero. If we don't get one side to be equal to zero, we're going to have wasted a lot of work. So let's get one side to be zero. Subtract twenty on both sides.
So this is where what Danielle asked happens. What do they all have in common? Two. Two, <coughs> two times three x squared minus thirteen x minus ten. Careful when you're factoring out that two. Make sure you do factor two out of every single number, or it's going to get messed up. Now this two just kind of hangs out here, right? This we factor like by itself, as if there weren't a two there. The two just kind of hangs out. If we were to distribute the two back in, well then the two would be back in there, and it would come out the same as the original. So that is gonna be like that. Okay, it's gonna factor out to be the same, you know, equivalent thing. Well, we have to get 3x squared. The only way to get 3x squared would be 3x times x. There's no other way to factor 3, at least with whole numbers. Then we need to multiply these two numbers to get negative 10. After some trial and error, uh, we get 2. We should get 2 and negative 5, just like that. Let's double check. Uh, 3x times x is 3x squared. Uh, 3x times negative 5 is um, negative 15x. 2 times x is plus 2x. And 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So that's good. We combine these together. This negative 15x and this 2x. And we get negative 13x, just like we were supposed to. Okay. That's just a check. Just making sure we factored it correctly. Okay. It's still equal to 0. Again, if we multiply these two together, we'll get this, okay? The two boxed things are equivalent to each other. If we were to multiply these together, we would get that. If we then distribute the two back in there, then we'll get this. Okay, so the two circled things are the same as each other. Okay. We factor out the two. Then we treated this like it's, like it's just a quadratic, just like normal, we factored it. And we know it's correct. If we were to multiply these back together, we would get this. If we were then to distribute the two, we would get back to that. Okay. So next, what do we do after we factor the quadratic? Three x plus two. Three x plus two. All right, we call those factors, right? They're called factors. Factors are things that you multiply by other things. Factors are multiplied together. Okay, three x plus two equals zero. All right, because we're multiplying two times something times something and getting zero. Well, one of those somethings needs to be zero. If it's not, then there's no way you can multiply two times something times something and get zero. So, or this is zero. Or 2 could be 0, or is that possible? Of course it's not. 2 couldn't be 0. 2 is 2, right? So since 2 is not 0, it's 2. Something in here has to be a 0 for this to work out to be 0. So we solve for x, and we'll get x is negative 2 thirds. We're going to subtract 2 and divide by 3. Add 5 on both sides. x is 5. And yep. solo now. All right, so let's put everything away except for a piece of paper. Okay, first things first. What's the first thing? One side zero at 12, 6x squared plus, plus, plus 17x plus 12 equals zero. Okay, now look for something that they all have in common. There's nothing that have in common, but you should always, always look. Okay, so we're going to factor it. Okay, we need to multiply.
multiply something times something else to get 6x squared. I'm going to try 2x, 3x. Just where my brain normally goes. And then I'm going to multiply two numbers together to get 12. I'll just try 3 and 4. OK, let's see what happens. We get uh, checking it. 6x squared um, plus 8x plus 6x uh, plus 12. And that gives us 14x, right? So no, that's not going to work. Um, right. Well, so 2, 3, 3, and 4, that doesn't work. Um, let's try 6 and 2. Maybe instead of, instead of 3 and 4, let's try 6 and 2. Four and three aren't going to work because, like, if we have a three here, three times six is eighteen. And four, yeah. How, how much the first work? Like the two work? Yeah. Um, when you like factor it out, is it three times three x nine x plus six x? Oh yes, it is. What did I do? You did like eight x. So I just multiplied it together wrong. Well, that's. That. You guys supposed to be right? Well, yeah. Okay. Goodness. Well, there you go. That can happen. So you think that one was right? Let's try it again. Two x plus three. Three x plus four. Uh, so we get the six x squared. The eight x. The nine x. That's three times three x. Okay, so that does add to 17. That is right, okay. 2x plus 3, 3x plus 4. Now that we factored it, we do what? Right, 0, set them equal to 0. Each factor equal to 0. X equals negative three halves. X equals negative four thirds. And you subtract and you divide. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, Courtney. We've been here a long time. If you hadn't have caught that. So, do you have any questions? Ask away. What's this? It's just four. Just one problem. So four points. Two for writing it down, two for trying for getting it right. So I'll come around and do things for
So this is two squared, this is four squared, this is one squared. Okay. So they all have a difference, right? Meaning they're subtraction, and they all have like square numbers. Okay. Can someone explain why that's happening? Why do we always get that? What is common among like the original factors that causes that to happen? For the middle term to cancel out? For the first term to be a square and the second term to be a square. You get all done. The x terms are identical. You got four. If you got four x in one, you got four x in the other. You got two x in one. You got two x in the other. You got x. You got x in the other one. How about this? How about someone give me, I, I've given you three examples here. Can you give me an example that you made up that the same thing will happen? Who can give me an example? When I multiply these two together, completely different from my examples, 
When I multiply these together, the middle term will cancel out. Okay. Five x. Five x plus two. Five x. Right. They're almost identical, except for the middle term. Or the middle sign is different. Okay. I want to expect you to remember this, but the word for that is conjugate. Okay. These two are conjugates, and that means they're identical, except for the middle sign is different. So when you multiply conjugates together, two factors that are the same, except for the middle sign is opposite, that's when you get this middle term cancels out. First term is a square, second term is a square. If you can do this quickly, what would this come out to be if we just follow that pattern really quickly? 25x squared minus 4. <coughs> okay, great. Well, multiplying these things together, it's not really where we are right now. We are in the factoring place. We are in a place where we factor these quadratics. Okay? So here's a quadratic that factors. It factors as x plus 3 times x minus 3. This factors as 2x squared, or 4x squared minus 25. Sorry. This factors as 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. This factors as 4x plus 7, 4x minus 7. And this factors as 5x plus 2, 5x minus 2. So, who can give me a quadratic, meaning something that looks like this, or this, or this, or this, that will factor into conjugates like that. Who can give me an example of that? Cameron, you look like you're thinking hard. I'll let you look at the other one. So you can come up with one of these, similar to one of these underlined ones, it's going to factor similar, similarly as these ones have. One little thing. Can somebody just change one thing about Cameron so it does work out? Change one thing. One number. Danielle, can you change one of these numbers out on Cameron? Can the 12 be something that can be a square? Something that is a square. Okay, so we're going to trade out the. So everything is great. Except for the 12, should be, it could be anything, as long as it's a square. What's that? 16. 16. Okay. It's got to be a square number. Because okay. remember, these two things have to be identical. If they're identical, except for the middle sign, if they're identical, then the x squared is going to be a number times itself, right? A square number. It be a square number. Who can factor this for me real quick? Four x minus. There it is. Factors perfectly, just like that. This is what we call, let's break down this name, a difference. Okay, a difference. Why is it called a difference? Because it's subtraction. And that's why it's called a difference of squares. Why is it called squares? If it's of squares, why is it squares? I'm going to need a louder or from someone else. Also louder or closer. <coughs> Jada? Because the number is squared? Because this number, this number, even this thing right here, they're all squares. Okay. Which makes sense because we're going to get two identical things multiplying by each other. I'll give you that first term, 16x squared. Two identical numbers multiply together, negative nine. Okay? Sound good? Got a difference of squares. Okay. So this is a special pattern that we could take advantage of to factor uh, these quadratics really quickly if we notice that all of these things are squares. We have squares. So let's try uh, 144 x squared minus 60.
consensus factor? Yes, of course. Difference of two squares. It's got two identical things to multiply together to get 144x squared, two identical things to multiply together to get negative 64. Okay? To have no x term there in the middle, or to be canceled out, or to not exist, it would have to be a difference of squares like this. Okay. Other than being able to factor out something that's in common, like uh, 5x squared minus 25. Uh, you can factor out a 5 of both of those, but when it gets here, you're not going to be able to factor that with the missing x term. To factor a quadratic that has a missing x term, it's got to be a difference of squares. So can we factor x squared minus 7? x squared minus 7? No, they're not both squares. How about? 4x squared, I don't know why I put a parenthesis there, 4x squared minus uh, 19. Can't back to that, they're not both squares. How about 9x squared plus 36? Uh, now they're both squares. What's different about this one? Plus, not minus, right? It's a sum, not a difference. This is not going to work. Okay? Try it out. Let's try out everything we think it might be. Well, we know we're going to have, a, have to have a 3x and a 3x to get 9x squared, right? Well, if you try plus 6 and minus 6, when you multiply these together, what are we going to get? We're going to get 9x squared minus 36, right? Well, we don't want that. So we need a positive 6 instead of a negative 6. But now let's see what happens. Are we going to get no x term in the middle? Is that to cancel out? Let's see. 9x squared plus 18x. What comes next? 6 times 3x? Eight. Another 18x. Right? What do we get in the middle? A 0x? No, we get 36x. Or we get the, yeah, 36x. That's not what we wanted, right? No. We want to get no x's. Okay, last, last try here. Obviously, we can't just make this negative. That would be the same as it was before. Maybe if we make them both negative. Maybe that'll work. Negative and negative. We do get positive 36 here at the end. What do we get in the middle? We get minus 18x and minus 18x. And what does that give us? Zero? No. Negative 36x. Okay? So, this one, not factor. Can't factor. So, we got this thing called the difference of squares. Got to be a difference. Got to be two squares. Not two squares, not factorable. Not two squares, not factorable. Two squares, yes, but not a difference. So, not factorable. Give you one more, and I'll put it in an equation, because then I have to solve this equation. <coughs> so um, 25x squared minus uh, zero. OK, so is this the very useful pattern difference? of squares. Is it a difference? What does difference mean? Subtraction. subtraction. It is a subtraction of two squares. What does that mean, the squares? The numbers are square numbers. Difference of two numbers that are square numbers. Factor. How does it factor? Anybody? Just jump in there. Saw lots of right answers. 5x, Five X plus 11. 5x minus 11. There you go. Great. Next, we factored it correctly. And now we do what? Solving the equation here. 
set them both equal to zero. So we subtract 11 on both sides. We divide by 5. Positive 11 fifths and negative 11 fifths, which is not surprising since those two factors are identical, except for one's a positive and the middle one's a negative. Okay. This is just going to be 9.7, so don't do 9.8, just 9.7. Okay. 